The WRU is in turmoil. Sexism allegations, players threatening strike action and losing to Scotland. So what the f is going on. It would be incorrect to say times are good in Welsh rugby right now. Sitting ninth in the world rankings with all four regions sitting in the bottom six of the URC. Things are not going well on the pitch and it's much the same off it. In January of 2023 BBC Wales conducted an investigation into allegations of sexism and other acts of discrimination within the WRU with one account saying a male colleague said they wanted to her and another colleague saying she was contemplating suicide after her experiences at the WRU, while another WRU employee alleged a racist term was used in a meeting. This led to a letter signed by Players Board Chair Ashton Hewitt and Chief Executive Gareth Lewis, calling for a review into the process that was carried out when the allegations were first raised, and for them to be public about the findings. Shortly after, the WRU Chairman Steve Philip resigned, before they announced the banning of Delilah to clearly cause outrage over nothing and stop people talking about the actual actual issues at hand. But surely things can't be getting any worse. Well no. To compound on to this after a horrific start to the Six Nations, seeing Wales getting heavily beaten by both Ireland and Scotland, the Welsh team conducted a walkout during a sponsor event over the lack of new contracts being offered to players within the four regions and the possibility of strike action happening before the game with England in round three of the Six Nations. The WRU provides funding to Cardiff, Dragons, Ospreys and Scarlets to help them compete financially with richer clubs abroad so that they can have control over Welsh internationals. A new deal needs to be struck between the WRU and the regions by the end of this season with a reported 70% of players or 70 players I've seen both reported not knowing if they will have a contract coming this summer or not. The regions are unable to offer contracts until the deal has been made and it is reported that WRU has reduced the funding from 27 million for the three independent regions and the 9 million that goes to the Dragons. This would see many top players needing to take a drastic pay cut or leave Wales, which isn't really an option if they want to play for the national team. To play for Wales, you must either play your rugby in Wales or have more than 60 caps. But on top of that is a financial situation of rugby overall. Sam Warburton said in a column that last month, Cardiff's players were only played due to the kindness of their owner and would otherwise have followed Wasps and Worcester into administration. The Welsh game seems in dire straits. Even if Wales did remove the 60 cap rule, where would the players go? If they want to play for Wales, they won't be able to go to Japan Super Rugby or the MLR as they play a large chunk of their season over the Six Nations, which would really only leave European teams and South Africa. I think South Africa would be unlikely as they import very few players and the travel back and forth during the Six Nations would be horrific. This leaves 33 teams and it's unlikely that Scotland or Ireland would want to house Welsh internationals and would rather imports they wouldn't want to release during the Six Nations. And we all know the financial struggles in England right now. It really only leaves the top 14 as an option. The WRU announced they made £94 million in revenue in 2022 and a £3 million profit matched pre-COVID numbers. Why are they doing this? They claim they have been overpaying players but I think it's more down to chronic mismanagement. The WRU is owned by the amateur game who constantly vote to pull funding away from the pro game and put it into the amateur game where they waste it on building clubhouses and giving 40 year old props pay to play money. In 2017 the WRU chairman Gareth Davis recognised that reform was needed and put forward a proposal to bring the organisation up to speed with professionalism but in response to this the community clubs ousted him as the chairman and replaced him with a man who ensured their funding was ring fenced and maintaining their control over the WRU. The professional game in Wales is paying the price for this and it will only negatively affect the national team which is the main selling point for rugby in Wales. If the national team continues its bad performances then fans will stop coming and funding will dry up further. The move was extremely self-centred and short-sighted by the grassroots game in Wales. On top of all this it has been no secret that WRU has been wanting to reduce the number of regions to three with it leaking a few years ago that Ospreys and Scarlets would merge before quickly retracting it due to backlash. Is this the WRU's attempt to reduce the regions down to three? With the Welsh players giving a deadline of Wednesday the 22nd of February before they go on strike, the time is running out for the WRU to negotiate a new deal and still be able to receive the estimated £10 million in revenue they will get from the Six Nations game against England. I bet Wales are happy right now that no relegation exists within the championship. A topic you can learn the pros and cons about by watching this video right here. Thanks for watching.